Wolfgang. So, Eva. Und yeah. Thank you very much, Luke. So it's a combined uh, work of a lot of people uh, presented today by Avida Neumann and myself. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit the background. I think the most interesting part of this talk are the results of the validation study. So um, what we were thinking about was a multi-center retrospective study to evaluate the impact of BIRATS adapted descriptors on a diagnostic performance of dual energy contrast enhanced spectral mammography in women with proven benign or malignant breast lesions. It was not a detection study, it was a, just a, the lesion were prompted and we wanted to have an a, have a idea if the descriptors we are using are working. And these are the um, people involved in this. Uh, we had five readers and a lot of other people who supported us. The background is that Europe and the whole world is getting, or is very colorful, the borders are getting less and less, except of UK. Um, they building up the borders again. So um, the question is, are we all speaking the same language? And um, the answer is no, we don't. Some people have their own um, systems, like the um, the UK people, but also others have adapted systems, screening has different than others, but most of us are using the Birex lexicon. And um, the idea is for a Birex lexicon of or lexicon itself that we have a standardized termination that is describing the most important features and that we have objective data um, to assess the performance of a modality and also to um, to get an idea uh, what, we can, what we can do and that we can compare our results. Um, the primary objective in the study was um, to test the predictive value and statistical significance of a predefined so-called first choice predictor or predictor algorithm for malignancy of a lesion based on mass or calcification properties with or without contrast um, uptake. You will see the results and the, the predictors later. Um, so um, the other one was to test the predictive value of statistical significance of this predictor regarding masses. We were looking at the shape, if they were ir irregular, for example, and or the margin was microlobulated, indistinct, irregular, non-circumscribed, speculated. So the descriptors we have from the Byrates lexicon, and we adapted them a bit uh, to the descriptors we are using for mammography, but also using NMR because somehow contrast mammography is a combination of these two modalities. Um, we added enhancement, yes, and this combination, and we did something similar for the calcifications. Secondary objectives was um, the best predictor in terms of the differentiation between parameter sensitivity, specificity, PPV and MPV, NPV out of the number of different algorithms. And um, the same for architectural distortions and asymmetries, but so far this is more, um, yeah, it's not, not the main, main point to focus on. So these are the descriptors we were thinking about. The first choice I already showed you. We added the contrast enhancement, yes or no, and then we want to have a look also on the different uh, algorithms and find out and maybe also find new combinations of algorithms that are more or they are better in predicting malignancy, yes or no. Same for calcifications. Um, another secondary objective was inter-reader variation analysis. We want to know how robust our predictors are and if they can be repeatable and everybody understands them in the same way. Um, and then I think it's the most important part, so the statistics of our first results and there Avidan is absolutely the expert. Thank you very much. So I, um, I came in to help with the statistics um, and um, the idea here is to look at the, this prediction table, to look at the predictors as a, a difference, basically just using the Fisher exact, which is the non-parametric test uh, that we are used to instead of the chi-square. The chi-square um, is not uh, really acceptable anymore in biostatistics. Um, and the idea is if you look at um, um, those that are predicted as benign, 
um, the frequency of what is really benign and what is really malignant, so the true negative and the false negative, the frequency between the two should be different uh, for those who are uh, predicted of malignant. And then, of course, that would tell you that's a good prediction. So you can just use a chi-square test to check the statistical significance of your prediction. And that's the simple approach we took here. Um, in fact, it's even a little... Um, um, I, I would say uh, more severe than what you really need because there's an additional um, or actually there's less degrees of freedom, less uh, statistical degrees of freedom because the truth is all of them are also limited by the total N. So the total N limits the degrees of freedom and it's actually doing that Fisher exact test here gives you even a somewhat more rigorous uh, statistical significance than what is really is because of this um, one less uh, statistical significant, uh, one less degree of freedom. So that's the simple approach um, we took uh, to, up, um, to check the uh, statistical significance. We will also do a multivariate logistic regression analysis and also from a bioinformatic approach, um, some analysis that is called principal component analysis of the different reading parameters, but those I'm not going to um, talk about today. We still uh, didn't get to that, I must admit. And I'm going to also talk a little about the inter-reader variation and show you some um, results. Um, in terms of power analysis, this is really important because if you want to really prove which parameter, which predictor is better, and as Eva showed, there's quite a few predictors we wanted to look. We didn't want to look only at one. We wanted to look at various of them. And um, the moment you add this kind of multiple testing, you risk um, of actually uh, finding the optimal uh, predictor but has no real statistical significance because you fine-tuned your results to, to, to find that predictor. And therefore, it's very important to have ahead of time a power analysis. And this is what we did here. So we had some um, a small study uh, from before. Um, and based on the results of this small study, um, we um, decided to look at uh, a power of 95% and very importantly, multiple testing correction. So the p-value we use, we don't just use a p-value of 0.03, we use this Bonferroni multiple testing correction. We divide the 0.03 by how many tests we actually want to, um, to look at. And so, for example, for masses, we wanted to look at 55 test because as Eva showed you there are 11 predictors that we thought of before and there's this issue with the inter um, reader variation so it's 11 times 5 so we aimed at the p-value which is 0 0.00054 and this is the right way to do it if you really want to do a correct multiple testing power analysis and so the number we had to get to the number I requested from the group uh, was 185 masses to read lesions, um, and of them, um, we also looked at the location size, malignant versus benign, so 37 benign and 148 malignant. And I'm very happy to say that the group really worked really hard, and, and really kudos to Mark here. Um, he provided us, uh, in the end, 47 um, benign masses and 153 um, malignant, which were, we knew there before, um, and so total of, of um, 200 masses were read um, by the five readers in the group. The same for calcifications, the same idea, I'm not going to go into it. Um, the statistics of the calcification predictor table is actually a little more difficult, so we ended up, although we only have seven predictors, we ended up needing more um, lesions to read, and indeed we also obtain more lesions to read. So in total, we almost have 500 lesions. 500 lesions were read by five people, five readers so this was really a lot of work and really i think really have to give um here a lot of um uh, thanks for this group that uh, i'm just looking at the data they did all the work so um this is the power analysis um, in terms of the first results in inter-reader variation, I think it's really nice. Different colors here are different results from the predictor, from the first choice predictor. Um, and you can see that there's very little um, places where the, there's co differences between the colors among the five readers. The whites are no data. Sometimes there's a 
missing parameter, a missing field in the reading, in the reading of one of the people in one of the lesions. So in general, there's very for sporadic differences between the readers. When you calculate the inter-reader variation, the average inter-reader variations between all the combination of the readers, it's about average of 5% difference, which I think is quite good. And there was about 0.5 to 3% um, missing data fields per a lesion per reader. So in general, um, I think in terms of missing data and, and inter-reader variation, this is quite good results. Um, and therefore, first, to say the truth, the inter-reader variation anal analysis here is a little less of interest. We're still going to perform it more formally than what I'm showing you now, but it's, I think it's clear that it's not as interesting as we thought of the beginning. And the second thing, we can safely use the average reader. So I don't have to look at each reader by itself. I take all the readers together and do the average reader. And because of the little inter-reader variation, it makes sense. I'm sure everybody knows here, so I'm not going to go too much into detail into prediction tables. We all know about true negative and true positive, false negative and false positive. Um, of course, the accuracy, if you want to look at a total predictive, uh, how good is the prediction in total, you have to look at the accuracy. The accuracy gives you the diagonal, so the true negative and true positive divided by everything. And very important, as I mentioned before, you can calculate the p-value, you can calculate the statistical robustness based on the Fisher exact test. And then the sensitivity, all of you know, is the vertical um, um, division, so it's actually the true positive divided by how many any real malignant um, lesions you have, and this tells you what is the fraction of true malignants that were in, indeed predicted to be malignant. And the same for specificity, what fraction of true benign were indeed predicted to be benign. And this is very important, and again, I'm sure you all know it, it's different approach to look at it is from the horizontal point, so to say, is the negative and positive predictive value. And the negative predictive value tells you what fraction of the predicted benign are indeed true benign, and what fraction, the positive predictive value, what fraction of the predicted malignant are indeed true malignant. So it's two different ways to look at it. And I just want to make a point, because sometimes people forget, and some people just end up looking at those frequencies, at the percentages, NPV, PPV, sensitivity, specificity. I'm going to always show the numbers, and the numbers are important, not only the percentages, and the numbers are important for two reasons. First, it gives you the statistical robustness. So without the numbers, you can have an accuracy of 90%, but it's for 10, 10 cases, so it's just not statistical significant. So the numbers are important for the robustness. But the numbers are also important for the question of what is more important? Many people ask me always, the NPV and the PPV or the sensitivity and specificity? And the numbers, if you look at them, can tell you what in some cases is more relevant. Because let's say in this uh, example I gave here, NPV is 50%, um, so you'd say 50% of lesions are predicted benign, um, actually malignant. But when you look at the sensitivity, only 5% of the true malignant are wrongly predicted as benign. So in this case, sensitivity is important. And the same thing you can look here for PPV. PPV is 86%, looks good. But actually, the specificity is only 25%. So looking at the numbers sometimes can tell you which of the views, the horizontal or the, or, or, or the vertical, um, is more important in this case. And of course, the question you're asking, the clinical question you're asking. So finally, the results. So this is the results for the masses, and this is our first choice predictor. So this was predefined. Um, in principle, you don't have to even do um, 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 the, the correction for the uh, multiple testing, because that was our first choice predefined algorithm. The p-value here is three times 10 to the minus 18, so I cannot even put 18 zeros here. Um, so it's really, really highly significant. Um, and the most important, um, of course, the accuracy is very high, NPV is high, PPV is high, but most important, the sensitivity is 94 and the specificity is 70%. So this is a really good predictor. And this is for the masses, again, with our first choice, basically just telling if the shape is irregular and or, so and or, um, the margin is one of the um, um, non-circumscribed and non-obscured, so all the other uh, margin that are more suspected. Um, interestingly, if you add enhancement, it becomes even better. And I must make a point here. It's the enhancement, yes, and the shape or the margin. If you do it and or, so it's or enhancement 
or the shape or margin, it becomes too much. And you're actually over predicting malignancy. So it, it doesn't go in the right direction. You really need either to, to have the enhancement and the, um, um, the shape and the margin to be predicting of malignancy, because then what it does, it really increases your specificity. So then you can increase your specificity, specificity from 70% to 81% without losing almost the sensitivity. And I think that's really nice that enhancements give you an increased specificity without losing a little um, your sensitivity. Um, just the last word, enhancement alone is quite a good predictor. Uh, for me, it was actually surprising, maybe for some people not surprising, but, um, but it was not as good predictor as, um, as our first choice uh, combined algorithm. And of course, it was not as good as enhancement plus um, the predictor of shape and, and margin. So this really combined predictor was the best predictor um, we could see. And again, those were the two first choices we had from the beginning. So it's really nice. And even if you do the multiple testing correction, it's still highly, highly statistical significant. Um, the results for uh, calcification are um, also work in progress and also for lack of time. I'm not going to go into them, but we are working on them. And you're welcome to see in the next presentation the results. Um, so conclusions, um, I would say that, as Eva said, um, it's really important to have a specific b red lexicon for contrast and haze mammography. Um, it's important to have it, to develop it, but also to test and validate it. Um, in our data, we saw little interreader variation. Uh, for masses, really nicely, the first choice algorithm that we thought of before, predefined before, um, really gives a good prediction and the addition of enhancement and enhancement, yes, makes this predictor even better in the sense that the specificity is better. Calcification, we hope to show soon. And in principle, what we think has to be done next is to have a validation study, a prospective validation study, to test the best predictors that were obtained in this retrospective study. And then with this validation prospective study, you can basically um, close this. I would really like to thank uh, the group. I must say, um, I'm, not, uh, I'm a biostatistician, bioinformatician. I'm, my main field is not in uh, breast cancer or radiology. Um, so I really would like to thank the CSM uh, lexicon prediction team, and especially Eva, of course, um, but also the GE people. Um, and I would also like uh, to end uh, with maybe a short story and um, to uh, end with uh, thanks for my um, for the director of my institute, uh, Professor Claudia Tredel Hoffman, um, because my as I said, my main field is not uh, is not this, and I've been spending quite a lot of time on this in the last month. And Claudia came to me and said, Avidan, what are you doing there? Why are you spending so much time on work that is not related to our institute? Um, this is not okay. And I said, I'm working on breast cancer. And she said, ah, okay, go on. <laughs> so I think, I think even if your boss catches you doing work you're not supposed to do, if it's breast cancer, everybody understands how important it is. So thank you. And continuing doing your beautiful work. I'm just looking at the data. Thank you very much. Hello.